Hi, I'm David Bell. Welcome to this episode of Through the Year with John Wesley. I'm a believer. I'm a believer in radical amazement where every aspect of the universe in which we live is sublime. In this universe, love can transform everything. But I'm also a realist. Human beings can be wicked and cruel. There's a hard edge to life. In this universe, there's no such thing as fairness or justice. There's only selfish control. Who has the power will inevitably abuse it. But there's another face to nature itself. Physical processes wreak havoc on life. Carbon-based life is both benign and malevolent, or so it seems. Anything but neutral. What does it mean to live in this universe of bipolar disorder? This question has always haunted Christian thinkers. It surfaced in a variety of ways down the centuries. Ever since Jesus Christ cried aloud on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When the Wesleyan missionaries came to New Zealand from the 1820s on, inevitably that feeling would arise. The clash of cultures would be fueled by what we can call the war of myths. We all live in and for and by our mythologies, recognised or not. Tangata Whenua, the first people of the land, had their beliefs, their myths and structural norms. The colonial missionaries had a quite different set of myths and norms. War was inevitable, but this wasn't just war about land, territory and sovereignty. It was also, to borrow another phrase, worlds in collision. It's a rich and complex history and needs to be seen from different angles. But today, as the Church Universal lives through another phase of the War of Myths. This history may offer unexpected insights. The bipolar aspect of nature is a clue. Nature, in fact, is neither benign nor cruel. It's our thinking that makes it appear so. It's our actions and how we interpret them within the forces of nature that give rise to our myths and stories. As we think, so we become. In Māori mythology, karakia or prayer orders the universe. In Christian mythology, prayer or karakia orders the universe. What we think about the universe we project onto the universe. And this is just as true in science as in religion and mythology. The Copernican revolution which put the sun at the centre of the universe instead of the earth is a revolution of the mind. The universe, nature if you will, hasn't changed at all. Not one iota. The ideas in our heads changed. The bipolar universe is the result of thinking from a bipolar perspective. It's disordered. Malevolent nature is the result of malevolent thinking. A, a user-friendly universe is the result of being user-friendly. When John Wesley set out his informal curriculum for clergy, his deliberate inclusion of science and geometry prepared a fertile ground. Some of the Wesleyan clergy in New Zealand would find that the seeds 
of the theory of evolution could take root, grow and flourish. Other clergy couldn't adjust so easily. By the end of the land wars, not only were Māori and Pākehā having to tell their individual and collective stories into a, a new mythological framework, but Christian thought also was having to adjust to the worldwide warfare of science and religion. In the upcoming episodes of Through the Year with John Wesley, we'll look at how particular clergy coped with it all. But first, we need to journey to nowhere. To Erewhon. That's where we're heading next week. See you then, and thanks for watching.